In the next few videos, we want to investigate Horner's method. That it works, how it works, and why it works. This is one of the most marvelously mesmerizing mathematical methods ever I laid eyes upon. So let's take a look at a few examples of what it can do. Let's say we have this polynomial here and we want to divide it by some degree one polynomial of the form x minus something, let's say x minus four. Now we could do polynomial long division and work out the answer or we could use Horner's method which would mean in this case writing out the coefficients of the polynomial all in a line writing out the constant term that we're subtracting which is a 4 in this case and then doing the following carrying this first term down multiplying these adding these multiplying these adding these multiplying these adding these multiplying adding multiplying and adding and just like that we have our answer 2x to the fourth minus 7x to the third minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 13 with a remainder negative 1. In other words, this last term is always our remainder. This is our constant term. This is our x term. This is our x squared term, etc. This is called synthetic division and is one of the things that we can do with Horner's method. Let's take a look at another one. Let's say we have this same polynomial and we want to look upon it as a polynomial function and we want to know what the value of f of 4 is. So we could sub in these 4's for these x's, multiply out, etc. Or we could use Horner's method, which again would mean write out the coefficients of the polynomial all in a line write in, in this case, the value at which we are wanting to evaluate, 4, and again, carry this first term down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and this very last term tells us that the answer is negative 1. This is known as synthetic substitution and is another thing that you can do with Horner's method. But I'll do you one better. Let's say I wanted to know what f prime of 4 was. Now I could go out over to the side and compute what f prime of x would be, or I could use Horner's method, which would mean, since I'm dealing with the same number as I was above, I can just iterate. I write in the 4 and do the whole process again. So I carry the first term down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add and I see that the answer is 1. So that is yet another way we can use Horner's method. Now you might have noticed in these examples that the first time I did division and the second time I was computing a function value but that the actual computation that I did was identical. I wrote in the coefficients. In this case, I wrote in what I was subtracting, which was a 4. And here, I wrote in the coefficients, and I wrote in 
the value at which I wanted to evaluate, which was a 4. So this was the same thing. And one time, these numbers at the bottom told us that f of 4 was negative 1. And one time, these numbers at the bottom told us that the answer was 2x to the 4th minus 7x to the 3rd minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 13 with a remainder of negative 1. Now, how does that work? Well, it reminds me of the old face and vase. If you look at it one way, it's two faces looking at each other. If you look at it another way, it's a vase. But indeed, it's both of these things, right? What we're doing is division, but it's also substitution. Well, which one is the real thing that it's doing? Well, wh which one is the real thing here? Is this a face or a vase? That's one of the things that I find so fascinating about Horner's method. It does so many things at one time, and it gives you so many different sorts of answers, but they all make sense in their different ways. So, in the next few videos, we'll be taking a closer look at why this works. But I suspect that even if we're done, if you're anything like me, you'll still be wondering, but how does that work? Even after you know